long story short, when, when, when I did the Kenny match, as soon as it was done, I went back tonight or to uh, Gator. And I said, let me do something at Corican tomorrow. Let's change my flight. I'll leave the following day and put me in there with somebody. I wanted it to be Okada or Tanahashi. Yeah. He suggested Naito. I said, perfect. And let's leave the door open. We did the beat down at Corican Hall the next day. It took us about two or three months to, to hammer another deal. Now we got the Naito match. Now, once again, people don't know if it's a one-off or not. I know differently. It was the perfect way for that match to end for me to go over. A, I needed it, like you said. B, it's going to lead to a whole story that we're telling with me in New Japan. Yeah. No, I mean you need. I mean you needed it if you were going to continue to go over there and and be a viable, like you know, you know, be able to use you to make money. You know. Hello. Hello. Say it again? Oh, no, no I was just saying, um, I, I mean, I, if if it was just going to be another it. one off, like, yeah, you could have gone over and, and dropped the fall to him and then, you know, but it was, it would be well, hard to continue to do business over yeah. there on top. It, it, it would be. And, and like you said, I mean, wins and losses don't mean everything, but they mean something, especially when you come in as a new guy, you know, um, even though it's Chris Jericho, there's years of experience in 60 Japanese tours. It's the first time in New Japan in 20 years. Yeah. So, hey, there's nothing wrong with losing to the best guy in the company who's now the champion. But the next match for me to win and take the title, now you've got a whole different view of what Chris Jericho can do in New Japan. Yeah. And that's very exciting mm -hmm. once again. And, and, and once again, that's all. That's, I, I, that's not something I suggested. Um, it's, it's something that Gato did. And I thought, like, that's really interesting to me. That's... I think that's a great idea uh, that really opens the door to doing a lot more stories, yeah. a lot more tales to tell with Chris Jericho in, in New Japan and almost doing a Brock Lesnar type of schedule to where it's not, I'm not there every show, but the ones that I am there on are, are, are now special because Jericho's yeah. there. So, like I said, I mean, I don't know. I didn't expect to be doing more matches with New Japan, you know, as of January of this year. And now that I've done, you know, another one and there's a couple more in the pipeline, I might decide to stay a little longer. And to piggyback off of that, you've already talked about, you know, being an artist in the ring and what your legacy is going to be. On top of that, nobody has reinvented themselves more than you. Is that just you constantly trying to keep yourself entertained? And how does it feel now? You mentioned, obviously, working at WWE. You have no filter whatsoever right now. How great does that feel? Well, I mean, once again, I'm in a great position to where, after all these years, um, I'm still working at a top level, and, and I, I really believe in the reinvention. I think that's so important. And a lot of guys don't do that. And I don't, I don't want to be, you know, if I was still doing Y2J from 2002, there was no one would care. Right. Um, so there, there's been a constant reinvention. I think 2016 was maybe the biggest year of my career. One of them at least. And then leading right into what I've done now with new Japan, I might be more relevant than I've ever been. Yeah. So that gives me bargaining power. And, and Sean knows this. When you, yeah. when Jesse Ventura told me this years ago, if you really want Vince to want you, go make it somewhere else. Yeah. And that's when, you know, you can really start turning heads and really call your own shots. 